Hi, I'm Mr. Seymour. I'm excited to be showing you what a day is like for me in Teach to One. As you saw in Dane's tour, students' schedules change each day based on their exit slip results. That means what I teach changes each day too. Our team has found that common planning is a huge benefit in Teach to One. We spend time together each day to plan our lessons, look at data or student work examples, and discuss new practices we're using. It's kind of like we're roommates rather than neighbors since we're all teaching in the same space. My day starts with my sixth grade advisory group, students who I get to see for a few minutes at the start of each day. Once every few weeks, we have a full session together to do relationship building. Right now is just a quick check-in. My first session of today is facilitating the independent learning zone. When I see that I'm facilitating an ILZ, I leverage the Teach to One portal to look at previous exit slip results for each student to decide on a couple that I really want to help first. I've learned that the first five minutes are crucial for this zone. Notebooks, pencils, headphones. After the first five minutes, I begin my planned check-ins. Then I circulate the section to answer questions, check notes, push student thinking, and give words of encouragement. While I'm facilitating an independent learning for session one, the rest of my team is either teaching a live session, facilitating a collaborative learning section, or facilitating a different independent learning group. Let's hop on over to Ms. Cardis, who's in the collaborative learning zone. This is my favorite zone because of the shared responsibility of the students and myself. Based on my student groupings, I sometimes decide which role I want each student to have and write it on their packets. I then do the challenge goal for each packet students will see so that I have a good understanding of what students will be learning. Sometimes, if I need a refresher, I'll look at the primer for that skill so I can anticipate any common mistakes students might make. As students are self-directed in small groups, I get the chance to take a step back, listen to them converse, provide support when necessary, and really extend their thinking. What does this part represent? Oh, oh. One thing I have found that really helps is giving each group a whiteboard to learn together. At the five minute mark, I direct all groups to the last page that has the ending problem. This lets me see where each student is at and do one last check-in before they leave. Now I'm going to pass it over to Ms. Mooney who is leading a live investigation on inequalities. The other main learning zone is called the live learning zone, which is a large group with a teacher. We really try to take the investigation part seriously since this modality is often the first experience to a skill for a student. Teach to One provides some great resources to help too. When I'm planning, I always look through the potential misconceptions, sample problems, and starting and ending routines. Whatever we create for a skill, we always save in a Google Drive folder, knowing that each of us may be teaching that skill another day. And that sign gives it away. How do we know? How do we know? Yes. Minimum. minimum. That's correct. The minimum. When facilitating this modality, I try to push for student voice and participation rather than direct instruction to help get all students involved and actively engaged. How, how, can I write this right? Did you write this right? What did you hear? After we all finish session one, we head to task. While all the other modalities are a single session, with task, we have the same group for seven sessions where we uncover two skills. Teach to One creates the materials, so we have an awesome starting point to start planning. There's typically more than we can uncover in seven sessions, so I spend time determining what to tweak and what to take out. The majority of my planning for each day is trying to think of a good starter activity based on where kids were at the end of each previous session. For our second to last session in this task, we're making pancakes with two different recipes to uncover ratios. The students got a chance to see how different recipes affect what the pancakes look like and taste like. Secretly, I just like wearing the chef hat. 
I'd say the best part of the task though is the task demo you saw with Dan where they present on an activity or project. This really reinforces the social learning that we care deeply about. Awesome. Awesome. The waiter. After session two, I head back to my math advisory group so students can take their exit slips from the skills they learned in session one. As you'll see, we've created some of our own forms to help students organize their exit slip results and set goals. It's really helped students with their executive functioning skills. Since it's likely that I didn't teach all the students in my advisory group, this is also a fun time to go around and ask how their day went and set some goals for tomorrow. Before the students leave and seventh grade comes in, I always like to give some words of encouragement. At around 4 p.m., I get to see student results in my schedule for the next day. Today, half the students passed their skills in my sixth grade ILZ session. So that's what a day is like in Teach to One. If I have to give you some short words of wisdom from teaching in Teach to One for six years, I'd say prepare yourself to work as a real team made up of teachers and students. You're all in this together, and the growth that you'll experience will be greater than what can be accomplished working in a classroom on your own. Amazing. Amazing.